Hello, and welcome to our series on sex, gender, and engineering, where we explore the different behaviors and impacts of those behaviors that women face in engineering work and school compared to men. I'm Denise Wilson, a professor of electrical and computer engineering at the University of Washington. And alongside my personal experience in engineering over the past few decades, I have a broader interest in studying the issues that women face in engineering, and especially strategies to eliminate, reduce, or otherwise circumvent barriers that women in engineering and other technical fields face in their careers. The topic of today's session is sexual harassment and intersectionality, specifically race and ethnicity differences in the sexual harassment of women. So while we generally know that women are more sexually harassed than men across the workforce as well as in school, particularly in engineering and in tech, this isn't always the case. And race, ethnicity, and other demographic characteristics also play into the sexual harassment landscape. And while there are a variety of demographics that play into that landscape and affect when and how much sexual harassment occurs, Today, we'll just look at race and ethnicity, important pieces in the intersectionality puzzle when it comes to looking at the sexual harassment of women. So first, looking at racial difference in sexual harassment, let's look at the difference between rates of harassment between Black African American individuals and whites in American culture. If there are differences, what are they? and what they, might they mean. First, looking at the numbers, we see that in general, Black women and Black individuals tend to report less sexual harassment than white individuals. And this occurs in five of the six studies shown here. In college, it's both sexual and sexist gender harassment. Black individuals report less sexual harassment than whites. The same is true overall at work, where the differences for both men and women tend to suggest that Black individuals experience less sexual harassment. But in the middle here, we see an interesting change. So when it comes to more egregious forms of sexual harassment, unwanted sexual attention in this study in college, Blacks tend to report more of that type of sexual harassment than white people. So why could this be happening? Well, since we know that most sexual harassment is experienced by women and predominantly rates of sexual harassment across the board are higher for women than for men, let's take a look at the issues that face black women. So on the one hand, black women face a form of double jeopardy or double bind when it comes to egregious forms of sexual harassment, such as sexual coercion, unwanted sexual attention, and sexual assault. Historically, black women have been subject, experienced sexualized stereotypes that make them more vulnerable to physical acts of sexual assault and harassment. Because Black women have been more sexualized over the history of American culture, this tends to lead to higher rates of assault and physical acts of harassment. Um, but like white women, they are also more vulnerable to the physical offenses because of their gender. Hence, that's a double bind. Black women would suffer both from these sexualized stereotypes that specifically affect Black women, and also the stereotypes and the issues that face women in, gen in general. Now, this logic definitely plays out in that domestic violence rates against Black women continue to be higher than against white women, and egregious acts of sexual harassment in the workplace also tend to be higher against Black women than for white women. But we don't see that universally. That doesn't extend to gender harassment. So despite double jeopardy, gender harassment against black women appears to happen less often than white women. This is an interesting contrast. And while this could be due to underreporting among black women, it could also be due to something called gender policing, 
And gender policing is where at work or in another culture, individuals are penalized or punished if they don't act in accordance with the norms for that gender. And this often occurs in male dominated fields such as engineering and other technical fields where women are penalized if they don't act feminine and men are likewise penalized if they don't conform to traditional masculine norms. Historically, Black women have been more frequently represented in the workforce. Historically, they have been in the workforce longer and in greater numbers, and also in work involving physicality, which is largely seen as a masculine form of work. So Black women in general should be more accepted in the workforce. Thus, white women may be expected to conform to traditional gender norms more so than black women since they haven't been in the workforce as long or in such numbers. So gender policing, where women are punished for not being feminine in the workplace, may be more extreme for white women than black women and thus lead to more gender harassment for black women, for women, white women. Now, while we don't know for sure whether it's underreporting or gender policing that creates the difference between black women and white women, the fact that the racial differences and sexual harassment between black and white women occur seem to switch once we move from egregious forms of sexual harassment like unwanted sexual attention to gender harassment, which is a more chronic but less physical form of harassment, is an interesting is interesting evidence that what black women experience in the workplace is very different from what white women occur, experience in the workplace and also in school and college and university settings. Now moving on from that, we found some interesting, we find some interesting differences also in the way Asian women are treated in the workplace compared to whites. But the reasons for those differences we see between Asian American women and white women may be very different than for black versus white women. Let's first take a look at the statistics and what they tell us. And in the studies that have evaluated Asian women and Asian men versus the experience of whites in the workplace and in college, we find consistent evidence that whites are sexually harassed more often than Asians. Now the question we have to ask us, as with black women, is, is this data really true? Is it true that sexual harassment rates of Asians is actually less than that of white people in the American workplace? And to answer that question, we should consider what goes on with the numbers that we just saw on the previous slide. Asians, Asian Americans, are susceptible to the model minority myth. In this country, in the United States, Asian Americans are expected to succeed no matter what. And historically, they have outperformed other underrepresented minorities. And the expectation has been that they will continue to do so regardless of the barriers they face. That model minority myth has the effect potentially of reducing their tendency to report incidents of sexual harassment and other damaging behaviors and may also lead many Asians to underestimating, underestimating the severity of those damaging behaviors in both work and in school. Now as we move on to the issue of ethnicity, we'll just consider one contrast in ethnicity here between Hispanic and non-Hispanic populations. And we'll look at some of those same differences and again find that the differences can be explained by an entirely different set of cultural factors. Now there's no convincing evidence yet that these theories of why the differences are there are true, but the underlying concepts and the cultural issues that are at play make for a logical reasoning that these are some of the reasons at least why we see differences in sexual harassment rates by race and ethnicity. And importantly, that those differences stem from a different set of cultural factors, depending on which races and which ethnicities we're considering. So to that end, let's first take a look at the statistics for Hispanics versus non-Hispanic individuals in the US. 
And what we see here is the contrast between sexual harassment rates between Hispanic and non-Hispanic white people in American culture. And what we see is that for the most part, Hispanics report higher rates of sexual harassment than non-Hispanic white individuals. This occurs for both women and for men, although these differences are not statistically significant. And they also to appear at work and in college and school. And the only place that we see a difference is in one study reporting that Hispanic women in college report fewer instances of sexual harassment by faculty than non-Hispanic white individuals. And what we can conclude from this slide, especially considering that the differences shown here for Latino women at work and Latino men at work, where the differences are not statistically significant, are we definitely have a mixed bag in sexual harassment rates. So what could possibly be going on here? Well, we can look to cultural differences in Hispanic versus non-Hispanic cultures to understand a little bit more about what's going on, what could be going on. And one of the more promising explanations for why these differences are so mixed is acculturation. And acculturation is the process by which Hispanic or other non-American cultures, individuals, become acculturated or included into American culture. As they become more a part of American culture, Hispanic women, as possible, may begin to recognize that what's happening at work or in school is indeed harassment. And in the process of acculturation, they may also simultaneously lose family support as they increasingly reject traditional macho behaviors for men in their households and families. This leads to an even stronger impact, a double bind or double jeopardy in terms of suffering the impacts of sexual harassment. They're not only experiencing the harassment at work, but they're also experiencing the impacts of their changing behaviors and attitudes at home in rejecting traditional female norms of behavior and instead seeking out a more mainstream American culture, which may run contrary to the cultures in both their personal lives and their professional lives. Now, whether or not this is true, we know that acculturation does affect Hispanic women as they become more included and more integrated into American culture. And this is one of perhaps many factors that are at play in the intersectionality between gender and ethnicity for Hispanic women in engineering, as well as other areas of the disciplines in the workplace, as well and in school, in American colleges and universities. And while this introduction to race and ethnicity intersectionality in terms of sexual harassment in the workplace has been very brief, it does show us that intersectionality, again, is very complex. And while women in general are more sexually harassed more often and in different ways than men, other differences also emerge in terms of race and ethnicity. Intersectionality by Black, Asian, and Hispanic women by gender and by race or ethnicity often show that these intersection, these minority groups or underrepresented groups, particularly in technical fields, report lower rates of sexual harassment. But we do know that these true experiences may be very different from what these numbers seem to suggest. Underrepresented groups in general tend to underreport their difficulties in the workplace due to their underrepresentation. But we also know there are other cultural and historical factors that are likely at play. Again, underscoring how complicated it is to understand intersectionality, but also highlighting the fact that considering sexual harassment involves far more than simply considering whether an individual is a man or a woman, and also looking at race and ethnicity and considering both how they experience sexual harassment as well as how to address or eliminate sexual harassment in the workplace.
That concludes today's session on sexual harassment and intersectionality by race and ethnicity. Thanks so much for joining us, and we hope you'll join us again in the future.